Hello and welcome back to Rage Against the Dice and we're here to start a new series of Paint with Nate. Um, I'm Nate, I will be painting, hence the name. And what we're going to be doing is painting this model, this by, called Corvina, from uh, Cerberus Studios. It's a resin model, it's rather gorgeous and as you can see it's a woman who's got, well, who's got um, quite thin, thin clothes on. So hopefully I'm going to show you some new techniques here. But I'm going to get straight to it because you don't want to hear me rambling on. You want to see me paint, or I assume. Um, so I'm going to start with showing you how I paint female flesh. Now, obviously... A change to the last one. This is a white base coat rather than a black, uh, black which I usually go for. This is because everything on her is going to be quite light and um, so it would make sense to do a light one. So I'm going to start with um, how I paint female flesh um, which again female Caucasian flesh I there's no offense here, there's no politics, I just this is how I do it, okay? Um, it works well. I think it gives a good feminine effect. Um, I'm going to start with um, a lighter flesh tone. Personally, I'm using the old elf flesh from GW rather than dwarf flesh, which I'd start with if it was a more masculine model. So, fortunately, being a... being um, on a white base coat, it's... It's not going to take as many layers as it would if it were a um, black base coat. Probably just two or three. But same same rules apply. I'll still use a very thin, thin paint. Because it just, you get a better finish. Simple as that. I'm not painting anywhere near the camera here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but there we go. As you can see, it's, I mean, some would argue that one coat is enough. Now, it's not. Um, straight up, it's just not. Um, this will, when it dries, be, as I'm thinning it out, it, it will get a bit patchy. So I would, I'm going to do another coat. I'll do that off camera, just because you don't need to see me doing the same thing over and over and over and over. Now... What you may also notice is a little unconventional is I have a pin coming out of her back. Reason for this is, well, I need to be able to hold this model somewhere to paint it. And the easiest and best, best way, best place to put this is actually her back because she's, um, the model is leaning up against the pillar so that's gonna be quite well obscured now what I will do is when the models finished I'll go back I'll take the pin out I'll quickly patch that up with a bit of green stuff and and I'll just quickly paint over top of that it's not in a particularly crazy place so it'll take me about 10 minutes to do but that's gonna be an off-screen thing because you know you don't need to see all the behind the scenes gump. But as you can see, at the moment, I'm just uh, putting on a thin, thin base coat. And, um, yep, uh, I'll leave that there and I'll show you the next. When I'm finished, I'll put a few more coats on and you'll see what it's like when we're back for the next step. Okay, see you in a minute. Welcome back. Um, there's the base coat dry on Corvina. As as I said, I took I used two coats and it looks nice and smooth now, as you can see. So we're gonna move on. So next up is a wash. I'm gonna use my Cedo Reichland flesh shade because it well it does the job very nicely. I do really like Citadel's, um things. It's had a nice coverage. I haven't found anything better yet. So 
basically I'm just gonna put a put it, well I'm just gonna give the skin a, a quick wash. I tend to overfill my brush slightly as you know. If you've watched uh, previous paint videos then I'll go around I'll spread that around till it looks nice and even. Right, so let's just try to get so I've got some nice definition between the skin and the uh, dress there. Let's try and get that to pick up a bit. So yeah. Now a trick with this I find is you really really need to get it all done one coat to make sure it's smooth. Because otherwise you get bits where you've, you've got two coats next to one coat and yeah you know, it looks it starts to look patchy and you have to kind of tidy it up with the highlight. Which is entirely doable it's not the end of the world it's just the pain in the butt compared to not having to do that so I'm going to try not to and the only way you can do that is to make sure you get it all in one I'll give this a quick shake because it looks like some bits in it don't know where they've come from but hey ho Make sure it's not pooling anywhere. And so really I've got no no particular tips at this point, I'm just putting a wash on. Except that how I've found the best way if you want to get a nice defining edge is to kind of to run against the grain if you will. So kind of run across the toes. Right, so I'm going to do it. Right, and there we have it. Just leave that to dry. Oh. Tidy up, put up. There we go. There we go. And now it's just a case of let that dry and come back for for highlighting. Okay. See you in a bit. Welcome back, fair viewer. Um, as you can see, the eyes are done. Now it's time to start with the highlighting. Now, for a first step, I've gone back to. My Elf Flesh, which was my base coat, I'm just going back over most of the sections, just keeping the creased section, you can have them, the most re recessed sections, not creased sections, it's not clothes, um, yeah. um, just doing the, the majority of the, of the model, just going Gone back, looking to where just um, so uh, I'm basically uh, adding a bit of contrast to shades, the model, when anything. Then I'll use the next step to start picking out the. The more raised areas. Oh, what's that on the brush? Now, when you're doing this step, I must recommend you thin your paint because what you'll get is. A much smoother transition 
and it's really important when doing skin to get a nice smooth transition between your between your layers because that's how you're going to get your natural finish yep as you notice I'm may look I'm paying extra attention to boobs and well kind of am because let's let's be honest they they do draw draw the eye so if those look good then that's a lot you know that's part of battle one you know, I'm not being sexist here I'm being just a uh, an observer observant about human the human condition so uh yeah I mean, absolutely no offense, so please don't take any. And now I'm just going to give her some muscle definition. Do a tricep. So uh, as you can see, I'm just gonna go through doing doing the large areas for now, and uh, well, I'll pause this here because you're probably getting probably sick of seeing me do this, and I will come back when I've done all this, show you what I've done, and. Um, We'll go for the final highlight. So, see you in a minute. Hello again, everyone. And, uh, right, I've done my ink wash. That's now dry. I've given that plenty of time to dry. So now, if you've seen one of my guys before, you know next up I do the eyes. The reason I do the eyes before I do the highlights on the skin is because if I knock up the eyes, it's easy for me to... Uh, get back and kind of just touch it up and get back to this step. So, first thing I'm going to do is looking at the concept art for this model. She's got quite kind of a thick eyeliner on. What I'm doing is I'm just starting this with a a black around the eyes. So, as you've seen, I use my thumb as a flow regulator. Which a lot of painters do. Oh, bit shaky. Yep. So, get those nice. There we go. That's more steady. Right. So, easiest way to do eyeliner, I find, is eyeliner on first, like that. Now, pretty cool as it is then I'm going to put a, a white line across the middle and make sure you've got the tiniest amount of paint on your brush When you absolutely completely and utterly miss where you're trying to do it, it's only a little bit. But guess what I just did? As I there we go. I'll go back and touch that up in a second. Now for some of you out there this is gonna sound I'm telling grandma to suck eggs. For others it might uh, hopefully there's people out there who don't know why I'm doing this. So reason why I'm brushing my that on brushing a lot of paint off on my thumb is it gets the paint at a, a manageable level right 
and then it also gets a flow in towards the bristles end which is where I need right as you can see there that her her left eye your right doesn't look great I'll be a bit sloppy there I'm just gonna go back and tighten that up now I'll do the pupils so yeah um I would always recommend, especially when you're doing fine detail, just giving you in your your flow ready. So here we go. Just do the pupils now. There we go. That looks pretty good. Just a tiny touch up to do. But I'm happy with that. And uh, be back in the next up for highlighting. Alright folks. I'm all done with my first layer of highlight. As you can see. What I've done is I've gone through. And I've picked out the raised. Most raised areas are. Not so I not painted the um I'm just gonna move the camera in a little bit. Not painted the uh recessed areas. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with my elf flesh. Um oh I've had people ask about the blue tack. The reason I've got the blue tack is cause it stops any paint that's dripping dribbling down the back. It just drips back in the pot. So that's a um, trade secret right there. Um, right, let's just find there it is. Um, so now I'm going to make a final highlight. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to just get brush, take my already slightly thinned oh great. Elf flesh, elf grey, I don't, I don't know what I'm going on about. I'm going to add some white to this. I'm just going to put that next to it. Always worth just putting them next to each other. And then you can um, kind of alter your mix as you go. Right, so that I'm, what I'm going to do though is I am thinning this down again. So as you can see that is really runny now. And that is important for this step, so I'm going to get a little bit of white in that. And just give that a mix. I'm just going to lighten this slightly. There we go, but as you can see, that is really runny. Um, not watery, and it's not this consistency of milk, because, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just thin. Because um, I've never painted with milk, so this, I can't say that this you know, it has the consistency of milk, so, anyway, anyway, I'm just rambling now, right, so, pain faces, I mentioned this before, I mentioned it also, I'll mention it again, one of the best ways to learn to paint faces is to go on YouTube, after you've watched this video, of course, um, and some other ones on the Rage Against the Dice channel, um, and go and watch makeup tutorials because they'll tell you where you need to be highlighting where you need to be shading and uh, so basically I'll go for cheekbones and what they call the t-zone and just the, the brows the brows the um have a nose and the cheeks, top of the cheekbones. Yeah. Yeah. That's going on. See, it's the beauty about using thin paints. You can, you got a, a little bit of forgiveness in them.
account. At the moment, it's quite a subtle thing because she is a very flesh heavy model. Um, not like you know, there's a lot of skin on show here. I'm going for a few more layers, and because I might usually just go for a single top highlight, but I'm actually I'm feeling with this model, I'm gonna go for two. We'll see what that looks like. I might go for a third top highlight. Um, we'll just see. We'll see how it looks after two. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do two, just because like long areas of this leg I don't want it to and looking patchy so you can see I'm just now I'm starting to look for where the light's gonna catch things like a knees top of her calves the shins I'm kind of just giving the model a bit more shape But here, obviously this, this thigh, because it's, when she's got a leg out, so it's gonna catch. Around here, give that muscle a bit of definition. Come on, get that thigh in. This calf. You use the thin paint; it's a great chance to um, smooth off things that might be otherwise a bit, a bit blotchy. Yeah. Now just. Uh, Yeah, so we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm thinking just one more highlight will do us nice. So this is why I go back to the previous paint. There we go. Mix a little bit more white in there. There we go. And then just go and we're just gonna look for the tip of the nose. And just spots of color in there. Well, Spots now just to No, I think she's gonna do it. She's gonna be fine with just the uh, two top highlights, I think. That looks pretty good to me. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Just with the two. If you guys, when you're painting your walls, want to do more, that's fine. But sometimes, sometimes less is more. Unless you're going for more of that extreme highlight style, which uh, is cool. If you're doing that, then, you know, go nuts, have fun. But um, for this particular model, I'm not. I'm just going for my usual level of contrast. So uh, I don't want to be too crazy with it. But uh, yeah. I'm quite happy with this so far. Um, which is nice. Because it's always that little bit more pressure when you've got such a beautiful model. You really don't want to cock it up. Um. Right, I'm calling that. Put some light on that, cause that's. Yeah, I'm calling that. I'm calling that a day. I'm really happy with that. So um. Yeah, let's see if we can get a rise in focus. 
That's not bad for a camera phone, is it? Yeah. So we've got some good muscle definition there. Excellent. Right, well, that's it for the skin. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, next up, we'll do the clothes. Okay, but uh, that'll be for another video. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.